Entrepreneurs can get stuck in their head. If you dream of changing the world, but you're not sure where to start, the Ad Valued Entrepreneurs podcast will help you transform your life and business. This podcast is for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from their work so they can live the life that they desire. You deserve it, and it is possible. It's time for you to add value. This episode is brought to you by Perfect Publishing. Perfect Publishing is a different approach to publishing a book. Perfect Publishing is sharing a project of hope. We carefully chose heroes of hope who exemplify living a life they created through faith, hope, patience, and persistence. No matter what page you open to in this mini cube of hope, you will find a leader with a big heart. You see you are not alone. The authors may share similar challenges that only hope and action could resolve. Get your free ebook at getadoseofhope.com. Get a dose of hope.com. Our guest today is Anna Grabo. Anna is the founder of New Coach Empire, a program that leads aspiring coaches to build their own successful businesses. Her coaching training began with the law of attraction, which led to her leading the sales team of one of the largest coaches in the industry. From there, she worked closely with the CEO of an online marketing agency, running Facebook and Google ads. As a speaker, coach, and podcast host of The Premise of Purpose, Anna is dedicated to helping people connect to their true selves so they can live their purpose on the planet, whether in business or in personal endeavors. She lives with her fiance in Los Angeles and plans to move to Palm Springs where they can grow their family. Anna Grabo and Robert dig into her two passions. She loved ballet dancing and helping people. She wants to help people believe that anything is possible. We each have the power inside us to create incredible things. Freedom is found in shifting your consciousness to abundance from the scarcity of feeling a victim to the world. Anna, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to uh, to have this conversation and to just share your entrepreneurial journey. I'm so happy to be here, Robert. Great to meet you. Absolutely. So typically just let each guest, you know, start with their own, you know, leap into entrepreneurship. Absolutely. So my journey started as a ballet dancer. It was nowhere near being an entrepreneur. Um, and when I was 20 years old, I quit after 17 years of my life just dancing. And so all I knew was that I wanted to help people. I didn't know what that looked like. So I jumped into the medical field and I became an EMT. I worked on an ambulance. Um, and then I transitioned into behavioral therapy because that wasn't for me. It was just stressful 911 calls. So then I started working with children with special needs. And that was really, really special because I started to have really deep connections with people and I got to meet with them one on one, which showed me that I really, really enjoyed the human connection aspect of everything I was doing. So I paid attention to the signs and I realized that what I was most passionate about was listening to motivational speakers and hearing them talk about everything they've learned, you know, helping to move people, inspire them. And so I decided that I would become a coach and a motivational speaker whatever that looked like. And I had no idea. So I instantly signed up for a certification program in coaching in the law of attraction. And for a year, I started discovering this new part of myself where everything was, you know, spiritual and meant to be. And there were these magical ways that you could just make your life easier and be happy and, you know, really get along with everyone. And so my heart just started opening up and I realized that I wanted to live a life as an entrepreneur. And most importantly, I really wanted to make other people feel like anything was possible. So that led me to work for a very big coach on her sales team. And I ended up leading it uh, because in a month, I started bringing in like 200,000 for her company um, on the sales team, which was crazy to me because I had no idea that was something I could do. And from there, I worked for a marketing agency, worked at the top of it, helped run it with the CEO. And then I started working more for um, different coaches and I started getting more personal clients and things like that. So then my business grew. I started my own podcast, The Premise of Purpose. And I now have my big group coaching program that I've launched this year, which has been running New Coach Empire, which is really exciting. So that's sort of how I got here in, you know, one foul swoop. Nice. All right. So I have to uh, confess. So 
obviously my wife and I've been married 30 years and then we, we just, you know, tried different things in date night and our local community center had uh, dance. And I knew my wife wanted to uh, take dance lessons and oh, now my brain's going to fail me. So there's a, a type of a style of dance that's, that's not as rigid as ballet, but um, contemporary, okay, contemporary. Yes. So that, so, you know, the idea of the word contemporary and dance. So we take this contemporary dance class and of course we're in our fifties and our bodies don't stretch, they don't move and they don't fold in any direction. And so we got, we, we, we got to the community center and got involved in this contemporary dance class. And I think it was six, six sessions, but pretty much after the first session, I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> um, because it wasn't anywhere near the, the, I, I assume in both our minds, we'd expected, you know, ballroom dance type style, something contemporary seemed like, you know, <laughs> something different than, than it was. And so, yes, Yes, very different. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm putting myself out there that that okay that was that was one of our our okay we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I I like contemporary dance, but it's never been my absolute passion. I really fell in love with ballet because within the structure, I was able to find more expression, which is kind of funny. But so for me, I really liked the structure, but contemporary dance has some really, really beautiful um, like images that it can make, but it's really only when it has balletic poses that I love it. So anyway. <laughs> yep, so I, I'm just putting out, we, we did eventually find a fantastic uh, ballroom studio and ballroom coaches. And, uh, and not that that's any easier, it just feels a little better. <laughs> oh yeah, I, you know, for a non for a non dancer. Oh yeah, it's really fun. I did some ballroom with my fiance. Actually, um, we did the same thing, and it was really fun just to be able to dance with a partner and not just you know stare at yourself in the mirror for ten hours a day and you know lift your leg a million times. So it was great. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> um, let's let's talk about the value of human connection. And obviously, you um, started to recognize your inner um, satisfaction from, from human connection, but really the value of connection in building a business and in, and in serving others. Yes. So human connection to me is everything. You know, if we don't accomplish anything in the world and all we know is that we've connected with people, I feel that we are complete right? Because it doesn't matter if you get to a certain financial status or if you have a house or if you do all these things that people will see. But if internally you know that you've made friends and you've helped to change people's lives, that's all that matters. So in business, I've noticed that the only way to grow a business that's actually going to be successful where people have wonderful results is through connection. It's through every relationship that you make. When you meet someone, you grow closer to them, you have something in common, you now form a bond, and that allows them to bring new people into your world, into your business. So connection is everything. Well, and and, and let's dig into that just a little bit, because um, just valuing relationships and, and adding value to others is really the power of of building a business, right? Yes. And so you, you mentioned, you know, working for this motivational speaker and creating, you know, leading the sales team. And that's really about creating relationships and bringing in, you know, people in, in those relationships. So let's dig a little deeper into that marketing aspect of, of relationship. Sure. So I was really lucky that someone who used to work for Tony Robbins on his sales team was able to give me some training on this. Um, and they had a script and everything. So first I learned the rules of it. You know, you were supposed to connect with the person, you know, ask them to go deep with their pains, go into the future, all of that. But then I got to sort of forget all of it and just say, you know what, I just want to meet people. I just want to make sure that I actually change their lives because if I'm going to talk to someone on the phone, I don't want it to be for nothing, even if this is, isn't a fit for them. So I started just getting on phone calls and meeting people and just listening to them, listening to their stories. And some of them became great friends and some of them were perfect for what I could pair them with and others weren't. But every single person 
was able to recommend what I spoke about or take advantage of the opportunity simply because we had that connection together. Well, and I, I love, I mean, obviously all of us have a story and, and learning somebody's story and where they're focused, especially in this personal development space. And you mentioned even in your own story that you, you, you started to believe that anything is possible. Yeah. And, and that's really changing your story, right? To, to, and, and that's really the heart of, of much of my work is, is looking at somebody's, the stories they're telling themselves about their past, the stories they're telling themselves about their current value and, and what they have to bring to the world. And of course, changing the story of what's possible in the future. 100%. And, and working and working in those stories is, is really the heart of personal development, right? And so helping somebody <laughs> helping somebody realize that that their past isn't set in stone right the events are the events happen and i and none of us can change the events that have happened which is where the real power lies is in our ability to change how we interpret those events and and how we how those events impact our present which in turn impacts our future absolutely and i want to share that i used to think that the world was out to get me truly I inherited some of these beliefs growing up, um, but even when I was starting my coaching journey, I truly thought that no matter what, something horrible was going to happen to me at any moment and there was nothing I could do about it. And so I remember taking one of those little self exams where you look at every aspect of your life, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. And in the spiritual side, you know, there was one that said faith and it was rate it from one to 10, right? And I rated it a one because I had zero faith in the world, in the universe, in possibilities. And I thought that no matter what, it was just going to be hard and I was going to be alone. But since that moment, which was several years ago, I just told myself, I just want to find some sort of faith that things will be good, that things will work out. And little by little, I started finding more evidence of it and more and more and more. And then more miracles and blessings came into my life, which continued to show it to me. And you know, now one of my most recent miracles, um, well, the biggest one I've ever had was meeting my soulmate. And then my most recent miracle was finding my new mentor who by complete chance met me on the internet because she was called to go somewhere. And now she's training me uh, techniques that she learned in the Himalayas by a yogi which is this whole new level of my life. And so again, I'm being proved that everything is possible and the world is there to help you. Oh, that's so powerful. Um, and, and that really plays to so much of our culture, right? And, and obviously we've just come out of two years of craziness in the world, multiplied by now supply chain, blah, 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 you know, Houses are more expensive. Gas is more expensive. Food is more expensive. Everything feels there's a war going on in Europe, and 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 it's easy to get stuck in fear. Yes. So let's talk about the power of fear in the world and how personal development, how our our plan, my goal, right? I don't watch the news. I don't listen to any of that. I I'm very intentional about what I put in between my ears, and so feeding myself on very positive, very motivational and very faith driven <laughs> ideas because I get to control the impact that I have and I get to control what I'm what I'm putting in. And, and there's a there's a real intentionality in that. Yes, I do the exact same thing and I can't listen to the news either. My partner does and he gives me little fill in bits of information and that is enough for me. But as far as fear goes, I think that fear is very important because it can propel us to make changes that are very good for us. You know, if you're in a dangerous situation, if you're headed towards the wrong choice, you will feel fear. I was, you know, set to go to nursing school at one point and I felt fear, but not the good kind, not the excited fear. It was fear that everything was like closing up. And so that was a wake up call and that was good. But I do know too that there will always be fear and there will always be love and excitement and happiness, even in the darkest times, right? So no matter what, there's both. And knowing that 
we get to make that choice. Okay, where do I want to live on this spectrum, knowing that there will always be despair and poverty and hunger and all of these things that I want to work to help? Where can I be so that I can make the biggest difference? And I believe that's always focusing and turning to love. Mm, so powerful. And obviously I had this conversation multiple times, but if it's a choice and if you get to choose, why not choose what's best for you? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I think so many people are caught up in, in, in the victim mode, right? They feel like, like you felt I'm a victim. The world's against me. God's against me. What, whatever powers that be, are against me, right? The government, the blah, 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 everybody's, it's everybody else's fault. Yep. But what happens? What happens when you say, no, it's on me. It's my responsibility. What happens when you make that shift? You give yourself all of the power in the world that you ever wanted, that feeling of possibility, strength, that you can actually accomplish anything just by making that choice that you will take ownership of everything that you do, everything that happens to you, you are freed of all of that anger and resentment and frustration and stress because you realize that you get to control it and you start to make things happen in your life that you've never seen before. So not only is it freeing, but you start to see evidence very quickly of the benefits of it. And, and I know there there may be some entrepreneurs listening who are like, I've been busting my tail. I've been working my my tail off, and 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 these things aren't happening, right? These I'm I'm not seeing you know, the, the difference, and it's it's so easy to to feel like you you don't have a choice, and and I call it the line of courage. I and I, I'm sure it's written somewhere that, that you, you cross that line of courage, and, and you realize. I mean, my wife and I just toured the Holocaust Museum and I'm a huge fan of Viktor Frank's work. And, and the most important quote that he talks about is that we all have a choice, right? No matter what circumstance, no matter what situation we we find ourselves in, we have a choice. <laughs> and and in that moment, in, in that moment of choosing, you get to choose whether you want to be a victim or victor. And and today, right, 100, 100, nearly 100 years later, science is actually catching up, right? The, the work, there's, there's great work being done out there that's actually saying that the brain is waiting for that choice to choose which chemicals to dump into your body. Yes. And, and we choose fight or flight, which, like, I appreciate you saying, fear is really important. Fear is what keeps human beings alive, Right. But so much of the fear-driven decision-making that's happening in many people's lives is dumping adrenaline and cortisol into their bodies and leaving them in fight-or-flight mode when it's not a fight-or-flight situation. Yes. 99% of the time, most of us are not running away from tigers. We're not running away from gunmen in alleys, right? Our, our lives are not facing this fear in you know, fight-and-flight level. Right. But yet the brain is still treating it as if it is. Yes. I used to think that when I was in fight or flight, that there was logic to it. I used to think, OK, I'm in this mode because I need to be for some reason, because I'm not safe. And so I used to believe it. Um, but what I've realized is that just because of the way that everyone around you goes into fight or flight, it's very easy for you to do the same. And so if I'm doing it, it's not necessarily that I'm in danger. It might just be that it's a habit. I'm used to it and everyone around me is doing it. So it's very easy to do it with them. And now when I feel it, I simply notice if my nervous system feels like there's adrenaline and cortisol and I always just take a step back. No matter what I'm doing, I just take a step back and I give myself some space to have a snack, read a book, something away from whatever I was doing, because it reminds me that I have the power of choice. I have freedom to make decisions, even if it's stepping away from an email just to have a moment with myself. We always have the power of choice. Oh, that's so good, right? Because so many times we allow what somebody else has said to us, what somebody else has has. You know, a statement somebody else has made or 
a conversation that somebody else has had, including assaults and terrible things. Terrible things have happened to really good people. And and obviously, if those things have happened to you, uh, I, I recommend therapy. I'm, I'm a huge fan of therapy. But at the same time, find a therapist that's forward thinking and not digging into garbage, right? Yes. We we have the right to let go of the garbage. So 100%. let's talk about the power. You you mentioned love. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Transformation happens in the space of love. It's it's absolutely one of my favorite things, but but so many people are, are still stuck <laughs> at this level where love is way up here, right? They're stuck at this this grief, this shame, they're feeling guilt and and they're feeling guilt in relationships. Um, so let's talk about the power of forgiveness. Amazing topic. I think that forgiveness is linked with surrender because you have to have the faith to just lay down your arms and say, you know what? I've been holding on to anger or resentment, or I'm bitter on something, and it's up to me to change it. So the first thing I get to do is I just get to set everything down and trust that I can change my situation. That's the very first thing, is trusting that you can change. Once you've made that choice, then you can start to look at everything more objectively, right? You can see the whole picture because once you're not in it and feeling it and you say, okay, I'm going to look at it differently, then you start to see the other person's experience and how everything related. And then you start to see also that it doesn't matter as much what happened because, you know, I've had very terrible, stressful things, traumatic things happen to me as well. And I used to hold on to those angers and those fears. And I realized that they are just people on their journey too, right? And they were making mistakes and they are human, right? And so me expecting everyone else to be this perfect being is not fair to them. And so I can forgive them for making a mistake. I don't have to be friends with them necessarily, but I can forgive them and understand that they were probably doing their best in that situation. Well, and, and I think one of our challenges is the idea that forgiveness has something to do with someone else. That's a good point. And I think I think for so many, and, and I think our religious teachings and religious upbringings, and, and then of course, even, you know, school experiences where, you know, the teachers put both of people together and say, you know, well, forgive him and, and oh, you've got to forgive your brother and for hitting you. And, and we get this idea that forgiveness is, is letting them off the hook, right? Forgiveness is taking away their responsibility. And, and the reality is we don't have that power, right? We don't, we don't have, we don't have the judicial power within us. We don't have the, I mean, really, if you don't believe in God, ultimately, you've got to trust that the universe, that karma, that whatever other source of power is going to enact balance. Exactly. But in your own heart, forgiveness is really about letting go of the power and control that you've emotionally given away. Yes. It's surrendering right? And definitely forgiving yourself for even putting yourself through the stress of trying to do what it is that you're doing and just recognizing that, okay, I've been working really hard and I deserve to feel better. So what can I do differently that is going to feel better as I move through this process, especially in business building? If it's feeling stressful and difficult, I always take a step back and take a few breaths because I know that if I'm struggling too hard, my brain is not open to creative solutions. So it's not going to help anyway. So anytime I take a step back, that's when I'm opening up to different possibilities and forgiving myself for feeling stuck, basically. So powerful. So one of those, obviously, we mentioned some emotions. We mentioned, you know, love and, and then, of course, guilt and shame. And, and I think forgiveness is really letting go of guilt and shame. Forgiveness is, is a you and you deal. Um, it, it has little to do with the other person, right? Terrible things have happened. Terrible things were done to you by somebody else. But when you let go of it, you open up yourself to say, I'm in control of how I feel. I'm in control of how I respond. I think our culture has done a terrible job in, in teaching us how to deal with emotions. You mentioned anger. You mentioned um, love as, as I, I 
I believe, and I think you were probably in alignment that love is the highest achievable emotion, right? And so let's talk about what emotions are really designed for. What I, I consider, I, I consider them like the dashboard of our life, right? Like they're little warning lights, right? And, and so some people, including me, have been taught, you know, don't be angry, right? Stuff your anger down somewhere. I don't know where. Um, and, and so we don't allow emotions to flow through us to, 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 to be the warning light that we say, Ooh, and we acknowledge, right? I think there's a, there's a lot that can be done when we acknowledge a feeling, when we acknowledge an emotion and especially when we're sharing it, right? So when you're in a relationship and now you, you've got a growing relationship with the love of your life, Yes, But if you don't acknowledge the emotions and you can't express and have com conversation and communication in that relationship, it, it quickly would, would erode away, right? With expectations yeah. and with all of those other things. But let, let's talk about, you know, the power of control, not controlling, the power of acknowledging your emotions and experiencing them to their, to their fullest, right? Till they, till they pass through us, right? Like a, I believe in the energy of the emotion and I believe that that, that energy is not designed to be stuck inside of us. No. And I used to bottle everything up because I was the most emotional person I knew. I thought I was broken because I cried like every day, most of my life. Um, mm. And I, I was told very young that I had depression. So I believed I had depression. I took it on. I took on that belief. But what I realized was that emotions they are really just like like you said their energy it's almost like wind that needs to pass through you it comes in it comes out and when you are feeling an emotion it is not attached to you it is not who you are it is just an experience like eating a certain food and so it's very easy to just if you're a little bit you know scared to just say okay well it's all right i'll push through it but if instead you really listen to that feeling and you say, okay, let me really pay attention to what's going on here. You know, maybe you're feeling burnt out from something. And if you just try and push through because you want to accomplish things, you're going to start pushing yourself away. But if you can say, okay, I'm actually feeling really drained. What can I do about it? Then you're going to start to feel better simply because you are paying attention to yourself. And like a child who wants their parents' attention, you are that child. And so when your higher consciousness gives yourself that attention and love and care, oh, you're feeling sad. What can I do? That's when you heal and it passes through. Mm. Well, and, and imagine the power in, in a relationship where both people are able to share authentically. Yes. Right. That activity made me feel this way. Right. And, and when there's no expectations, right? And I think the challenge is, of course, we bring expectations, we bring baggage into relationships, business relationships, partnerships, and of course, you know, marriages. <laughs> and and when we hold back how we felt or we hold back an expectation and don't communicate those, that's where we create all kinds of blocks, right? All kinds of um, I mean, I mean, it's unfair to expect our partner, right? And I think that's the challenge in a lot of situations, right? Oh, my partner, if you only knew, <laughs> they, they, they should know, right? They should know how I felt. They should know what I expected. And, and I think in business, we, we can create some of the same situations. Well, they should have known how I would expect or how I would act or how I, how that would make me feel, but we never communicate those things. No. And, and I think it creates situations, which of course destroy relationships, destroy businesses, destroy simply because we've created this mindset idea that, that we're all mind readers. Yes. Yes. Rather than, rather than being, having that level of awareness and being willing to be an open book. Yeah. And I used to be the queen of not communicating because growing up in my family, everyone was very passive. No one said anything when they were upset, but then they went off and told someone else that they were upset with someone else. That's so, really helpful. 
Oh, it's the most helpful. <laughs> so thankfully, my fiance grew up in a house where they did communicate. And so he taught me and it has been painful when I don't want to say something that I think might hurt his feelings. And that's the hardest part for me is I don't want to say something if it might make someone else sad or upset because all I want to do is make people happy. But when I'm able to say those things, that's when everything heals and everything moves forward. And we're able to have calm, connected conversations, even when there's a misunderstanding and move forward with that. And it's the same thing with business partnerships. We will be right back after this short break. This episode is sponsored by the newly released book, Dream Life Planner, Move from Tired and Overwhelmed to Free and Empowered by Noelle L. Peterson, available on Amazon. Or you can order a personalized signed copy at empower, E-M-P-O-W-E-R, to dream.com. That's empower, number two, dream.com. If you enjoy the show, please like and subscribe, leave a review, tell your friends. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. A lot of people try and put too much focus and emphasis on these people who are in our lives as if they're this big, you know, perfect entity, how maybe our faith is, but it really requires you to simply get your own energy for yourself from your own source, whatever it is that fills you up to get that fully, and then to treat everyone else the way that you have learned to treat yourself when they need something, right? Just total understanding, being there for them, and just forgiving. Well, and, and letting go of expectation. Yes. Right? If if you, expectation and assumptions are are the destroyers of, of our emotional centers. Yes. And when we can let go of those or be willing to express those, right? I expected that you would do this and, and, and they can simply say, well, why? Right. I mean, you know, and, and I think those, like you said, those conversations can be painful, but, but when we get right down to it and we put our expectations out on the table, then, then we've raised the level of awareness. Yes. And, and when we can do that for ourselves, which, because this, this really is a you and you deal. And, and so many of our expectations are based on, on ourselves. And, and I think it's super powerful when we can have awareness of our expectations and then clear, clear them up, right? Like you said, <laughs> you, you clear those things out because nobody could meet that expectation. Yeah. <laughs> and when we have those expectations for ourselves and we're not meeting them, our brain is lowering our level right? Lowering our expectations because, well, you've now put that out there and now it's, it can become well, quote unquote realistic, right? Right. Well, what, it's is, what is realistic? Exactly. And it's really great that you're mentioning letting go of expectations because it is the same thing in business. If someone wants to grow an amazing business, the same way that if you put expectations on a partner, you're going to hurt them because you're expecting these things and you're putting all this energy into it. It's the same with your business. If you let go of the expectation of how you think it should grow, if you can let that go and just decide, okay, it's going to grow. I've decided it and I'm going to see how it does so naturally. I'm not going to force it. That's when it can flourish just like relationships. So now let's talk about attracting, right? The idea of, of, bringing to you all the things that you need to, to make your dream, your vision uh, reality feels like for many, right? Impossible, right? And so let's talk about that, that energy. Yes. Attracting is something that I've worked on for a long time because we can all naturally do it and we do it all the time. It's something that we all have available to us. And you will notice that you are attracting things when you are just feeling very free and happy. And maybe you notice that, you know, someone holds the door open for you or someone says thank you when they don't normally or just something extra that seems better and easier. But you can actually hone this ability to attract things when you actually let go, right? If you let go of emotions and expectations, then you can make yourself happier. And once you're in this happier state, you can start to attract whatever you want to come your way 
just by that excited, positive expectation and being open to seeing all the creative solutions to get there. Well, I want to, and I want to clarify, you said it right just so quickly in there that basically we are all, this law is a law and we are all absolutely attracting what we focus on. Yes. Right. And so there's so many that are focused on, and we talked about it earlier, the stress, the the anxiety, the the unbelief. Why are bad things happening to me? Right? Why is God against me? So if you're playing the victim, what are you attracting? Everything that you are thinking about, you will attract more situations to be a victim if you are feeling like a victim. Mm. And, and I think so many people that just confirms for them, well, see, I told you God was against me, right? right. <laughs> it just it's plays right simple. into exactly what they expect. Yes. You get what you focus on. So how do you help, how do you help somebody transition from the focus as the victim to becoming the person in control of their life focused on the desires and the things that they truly want while letting go of the outcome? Yes, great question. Well, first, I want to talk about a scientific experiment that was done in the early 1920s, which might help people get an idea of just how powerful their focus is. Because the scientists found that if you shot different little small particles of light through these slits in paper, you could get a pattern on the wall. But if you watched each photon go through, it made one pattern. And if you didn't watch the whole experiment, it made a different pattern. And so they couldn't explain why. The man won a Nobel Peace Prize. Um, but what they found was that you truly affect everything just by what you're even looking at, right? You can control everything around you. So how do you get out of victim? Great, great question. Well, first, allow yourself to feel, right? You can be sad for a little bit. Give yourself a moment just to truly process everything that's going on for yourself. You know, you don't have to shove it down. Give yourself a little bit of space to feel it, right? And then just ask yourself, what do I want, right? This is a very hard question for people to answer at first because they realize they don't know what they want. They just know what they don't want. So once they know how to answer that question without saying what they don't want, right? It's very different from, oh, I want to have a new client versus I don't want to go a month without a client. It's very different. So if you can get to that place of, ooh, I really want to have a client and I want to have this experience and that, all of a sudden you've immediately shifted into an attracting vibration into that energy. And so you've already solved your problem. The next step is just continuing that cycle so that instead of the habit of staying in that downward spiral, you start to pull yourself into an upward one, which takes a lot of effort in the beginning because you are constantly seeing yourself in an old habit, remembering and putting yourself into a new process. And you will fall down sometimes. You will go into downward spirals for sure, but you will also keep going. And that's how you really attract amazing things. Well, you just catch yourself faster, right? That's yeah. not to say that bad things don't happen. We catch ourselves faster in that reaction cycle and can turn turn the table you mentioned something so powerful and and the reality for for so many people is focused on what we don't want yes telling ourselves what we don't want over and over and over again how and and, and, and i don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole but the truth is so many people focus on what they don't want even in their affirmations even in the statements that now they've turned themselves around. They have an awareness of this and yet they're still stuck on what they don't want. And of course, that's what they're manifesting in their lives. Yes. And it's easy to feel that when you do feel limited and stuck. If you feel limited and stuck in some way, you are going to focus on what you don't want because you feel that you have something you don't want. So the only way out of it is starting to unlearn that feeling of being stuck and start to see life as completely open in any way, shape, or form and noticing what kind of power you do have. Because once you can actually feel it internally, how free you are, you don't feel stuck 
And it's easier to focus on what you do want because you're not worried about this wall that's around you. So how do we switch from scarcity to abundance? I believe that it is knowing yourself very, very well. Knowing yourself and forgiving yourself, looking at what it is you do want, and truly understanding a new level of thinking. It's it's hard to describe a shift in consciousness because that's what it is. It's going from thinking one way to thinking a new way. So it's not a very linear process and it will look different for everyone, but you might find it just sitting in nature or reading a book or just some place where you are connected to your true self, where you can actually think and hear clearly. And that's where you're going to tap into the feeling that things are possible and unlimited is when you're connected to that energy, that power that's within us that comes from this source. You can feel, wow, we have so much power inside of us and all around us that we can actually wield this for good. And once you feel that, then you really feel this abundance. Well, just recognizing that nature is abundant, right? Like there's the... the the reality all around us is is abundant and so much of our mindset around scarcity has been based on money and limitation and the idea that there's this there's just this limited pool right of yeah. you know and, and i guess you know budgets and and growing up being told that you know there's not enough there's not enough there's not enough the world telling us there's not enough there's not enough and yet you can find you can find abundance. One of the examples that I share was my daughter has a, a five year old and and she was trying to bribe him into. Into hugging grandpa, right? She's like, I'm going to take grandpa's hug as if grandpa only had one hug to give and she was going to get it first. And I'm like, whoa, stop. We have, I've got an unlimited supply of hugs. I promise you, my hugs will never run out. Mm -hmm. They are abundant beyond count. We will not be able to count the number of hugs I'm willing to give. Yeah. And, and so when you start to shift to thinking away from this, this limited resource to unlimited resources, and, and of course, all of us have grown up in, you know, times of, of li limit, right? There's just all these limits around us. And so it's hard to remove this, yeah. this idea of unlimited possibility. Yes. I believe that the unlimitedness is who we really are. And then we're in this place that has limits. So, okay, there will be limits within this physical place. There are going to be walls and doors and obstacles. But if you remember your true nature, that just who you are, Every leaf, every tree, like you said, nature is abundant. Everything living is unlimited. And so you are in that category. And knowing that, you can start to see every obstacle not as a definite limit, but just as part of your journey, another stepping stone, something that's taking you where you want to go, because there will always be limits, but you are unlimited. And so you can go across whatever path it is you want to do. Oh, that's so powerful. I like it. All right. We've mentioned your fiance a couple times. So what was your favorite date? It was definitely our first date. Um, he had never met me. I'd never met him. But somehow we went to the same elementary, middle and high school and never met. Wow. Um, yes. There are literally pictures of me in photo albums in his house growing up as a kid from our schools. And we had no idea. Um but he just took a whole day off work and he just decided that it was going to be a very special date. So he picked me up, drove me down to the beach, took me to a little restaurant cafe where he had worked as a bus boy in high school. And we had lunch and then we went to the pier and rode all the little rides, sat on the beach for a bit. And then he drove me home. Um, and it was just it was perfect. I just I knew that this person was very special and that I could easily just be next to him forever. So it was magical. Oh, love that. Love that when people find that and believe it and are willing to take the chance to live it out. And that's so, so yes. exciting. All right. So I want to dig into this idea of living life by design. And so now you're, you're at a place where 
where you can design a life that you and your partner want and you can build a business to support it. Yes. Life by design is very exciting. And I'm at this point where I'm starting to see things that I had originally written down on paper and they've manifested. Even just the way my desk looks, like five years ago, I wanted a desk with a certain candle and a certain look to it and a certain feel. And somehow I got to this place. And so we don't even realize just how much we are designing every little thing just by our thoughts, by things we notice that we like. Ooh, I really like this shade of paint color that I'd like to have in this room of my house. And then later it appears. So everything from the little tiny details to the very big things such as career and partners, we can actually pay attention to what we like and choose to create it in our lives. So let's let's talk a little bit about the power of writing it down versus just thinking it. Yes. Well, if you think something, you might forget that you thought it. And when it does happen, you might think, oh, well, maybe that was just a thought. So there are two sides to it. One, you might uh, manifest everything anyway and then just not feel that it was manifested because you can't remember. And the other thing is that you might also not have as much energy and focus going into it because it's just a fleeting thought. And in that moment, you really feel it. But then after that, it's gone. If you write something down, it is now tangible and physical forever. You can take it out. You can look at it. You've now brought something already into the world that exists that says what you want to have happen. And I've done a thing now where every quarter I write out goals and things I want to hit. This is the first year where I've done it consistently. And every single thing I've written down on paper to a T has happened so far. So I'm going to continue doing it. And I recommend everyone does it because it's very powerful. All right. So what if I wrote down something and I change it? Then you change it, right? It's whatever you most want. Um, that's what you are going to be working towards attracting without you even knowing it. So uh, I love that Napoleon Hill talks about it being a burning desire. How, how do we make these goals a burning desire? Mm. Yes. Well, a very easy way is to think about how you would feel if something happened. So for instance, someone says, oh, I want to make this amount of money. Okay, so imagine yourself making that amount of money. What would it allow you to do? Okay, take a trip to this place. You're in this place on the trip. Now, what are the emotions you're feeling? What does that allow you to do? And the more that you imagine experiencing the feelings that go with it, the more that you will understand how important it is to live in that space, how precious it is to experience life in that way. And that becomes your why, as many people say, right? The reason that you wanna do it and once you can really clearly see how important it is, not just from a material aspect, but really from an emotional place where we can connect to others and really give more of ourselves, then we realize how important it is that we move forward with our dreams. Mm. So you mentioned imagination. And for many, they don't they don't feel like they're creatives. They right? We've 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 bottled creatives into this side of dancer of artist of musician um and and i think the 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 tech person or the office person or the even storytellers i guess we keep in that artist side but there's a there's a side where we're not we don't feel like artists mm -hmm. we don't feel like creatives and yet we have that same creative power what would you tell somebody that, that doesn't feel creative to, yeah to encourage I love that. their imagination. Absolutely. So it really is linked to your emotions. So people don't have to think of it as imagining or creating anything. It's really just paying attention to your own body and your own self. So when you are in your desk right now, what you are doing currently, you can notice how you are currently feeling. And then if you just write down even the different steps that you wanna take and you look at the written sentence of something that you wanna accomplish and you just look at that sentence and you read it and you think about it, you are going to feel differently internally. So if you just pay attention to what you are feeling in that moment, you have already imagined yourself there and placed yourself there without having to create it mentally. Mm, so powerful. All right. So you mentioned your podcast. What 
what has been the impact of of hosting a podcast? Oh my gosh, it's been getting to connect with so many people. I had no idea how connecting a podcast is because anytime you meet someone, now all of a sudden they want to have a conversation with you. You want to have a conversation with them. You get to know people that branches out. And it's really a place for people to talk about things that are near and dear to them. And so I get to develop my own way of thinking by hearing from people and actually sharing my thoughts. So it's such a big self-development tool for myself. And every single person that I've met, I can see them sharing more of that with the people they've met. And so it's just this ripple effect that I'm so grateful for. Absolutely. All right. So we mentioned creativity, imagination. Let's talk a little deeper about play and fun. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, play and fun is so important. Um, I'm very lucky that on my father's side, they were very playful. My grandparents who were in their 80s, we saw them for Christmas and they were playing charades um, and they were literally playing alligators. And my 87 year old grandpa was on the floor, like being an alligator and slithering on the floor. So I'm lucky that that was modeled to me very early on. Um, but it's easy to forget to have fun and to play. And I forget it all the time because I'm always focused on what do I, what do I want to accomplish in this moment, right? And usually it gets very work-centered. So I have to literally remind myself every day, oh, you know what? I got to try and play and have a little bit of fun. And, you know, then you start doing new things. I started painting again a little bit ago, even just watching some very funny TV show or video clips that makes you feel silly. All of that can put you in that place. And, you know, that's what life is really about, right? It's about enjoying this process too, not just creating things or reaching goals, but what if you enjoyed it along the way? Well, I hope that you're enjoying it along the way. We're designed to enjoy it along the way. And I think we we lose this idea that we were created as co-creators. We're, we're the only being, only created entity, animal, right, if you will, that, that has that power, right? All the other animals, I mean, obviously birds create a nest and, and you know, other animals, beavers create a dam and, you know, animals create their, their little house. But, but beyond their instinctual creation, they don't, they don't create human beings create and when you look at you look at a city you look in the room all around you you look at uh, restaurants and food you mentioned food earlier and all of the different foods that that human beings create we are we are creative beings and when we tap into our creativeness we're tapping into something that's 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 so much bigger than we are right and and i think i think recognizing that your written words on your page, the written words when you're coaching, the written words when you, we miss some of that with now with technology, right? We're down to text messages and, and, and emails. And, and I think it's important to tap into our imagination, to tap into our creativity during some part of each day. Um, it is so powerful to, to really reconnect to what we were designed for. Yes. And as you were speaking, I was thinking of this image of how the creativity is really part of the essence of who we are, because even just the word create or creation, it's very linked to this idea of faith, this, um, this quality, this etherealness that we cannot put our finger on, that is part of who we are, and that is the part that creates. And so tapping into that piece of you is the unlimited part, and that is what allows you to really do anything you want in life. Mm, so good. All right. So tell me a little bit about your routines. What what do you find that's that's non-negotiable now for you as you're building your life and business? Yes. Well, I have a trick that I learned from a coach named George Bryant, and this is to have a ceiling and a floor for my daily goals. And this means that you have a minimum and a maximum. So if the world was falling apart, I know that I can sit for five minutes a day and meditate right? But ideally, maybe 30 minutes to an hour. But this way, I don't beat myself up if I don't make time for it, if things happen, right? So meditation is a very big one for me. Um, the very minimum is five minutes. I sit, sometimes I listen to music, silence. Sometimes I look at nature. Um, I even have now mantras and chants and things that I like to listen to. Um, but that is one of the main ones. And also, 
very much is what I put into my body. So I drink a lot more water now. I eat more fruits and vegetables. I eat less meat. Um, it's way more rare now. So I really focus on what I'm putting into my body, what I'm putting into my mind, how I'm setting myself up. And the other ritual really is just every time I interact with someone, trying to really see them and be present in that moment, not to be thinking about the past or the future, but to really be present in every moment, because that is what the meditation feels like. It feels like presence. So I, I work on this feeling that I'm in that same state throughout the whole day, and it helps me to be a better partner, coach, friend, all of the above. Oh, absolutely. Those are really powerful. All right, Anna, what, what inspires you? Great question. Um, people inspire me. Every single person, when they do something kind, when they show this unlimited love that all human beings have, that inspires me more than anything. So whether that's from my partner or my mentor, friends, all of that just makes me want to give so much more. Hmm. So you mentioned mentor. What? How have mentors helped helped you grow? And uh, obviously you'd encourage people to have mentors, but how, how should they find a mentor? Yes. Well, I would say that mentors can look very different at different times. I always wanted a very close mentor for my journey in business because in dance, I had a mentor and that was so important, but I didn't get my mentor right away, right? It took several years and it wasn't by me going out and finding her she happened to find me at the perfect time. So what mm -hmm. I would say is people can seek out teachers and coaches and mentors that can give them very valuable skills, whether it's emotional or physical, and they can learn those things, but they might not have a close relationship with that person. But eventually they will naturally find whoever is right for them when they are ready. And so the mentor will come to you when it's the right time. Well, and that's just more part of that law of attraction, right? When you're in the right place and you're open to that, that, that it'll be drawn to you. Yes, 100%. And I, I know the anguish of wanting someone there to help me in the beginning. I know what that feels like. And so all I can say is that you will see as you continue to have faith and turn towards the goodness and choose love, the more you do it, the more you will understand that it is all possible. Oh, so powerful. Anna, thank you. All right. What's your big dream? My big dream is to create a lasting effect in this world of love and connection, healing, happiness. I'm actually starting to work on an organization where it can give community outreach to people all over the world. I have a friend who lives in Estonia and she is over by where the war is. So she's seen a lot of sadness and destruction. But what we want to do is we want to really start bringing more love and connection into people's lives. So my big dream is to have more and more and more of this love, whatever that looks like. It doesn't have to be related to me in that way specifically, but just getting it out there. Oh, so powerful. And of course, I know you're going to make it happen. So that's fantastic. Thank you. All right, Anna, you've spent an hour with an entrepreneur having coffee and you want to leave them with Anna's words of wisdom. What would you share? Trust that things will work out exactly as they're meant to. Give yourself grace and get excited for the road ahead. Wow. Anna, thank you so much for sharing. I, what a wonderful conversation and so much value that you've added to our audience. Thank you so much, Robert. If you enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe, or leave a review. We have a free gift for you at addvaluemindset.com. That's addvaluemindset.com. We've collected some of the best mindset secrets shared by successful entrepreneurs on our podcast, and we want to give them to you for free. addvaluemindset.com. In our next episode... Marissa Jones and Robert dig into the challenges that women face when raised with the expectation of go to school, get married, and have kids. She wanted those things, but also wanted more. After writing her memoir, she discovered the power of story and the power she had that could help others who were trapped by their stories.